All right, in today's video, I'm gonna go over the entire process of onboarding a client into your sub accounts here, whether it's SMMA or SaaS, doesn't matter. It's the same process and I'm gonna walk through it right now. First things first, we gotta go and click on create sub account, go right here. Now we have SaaS account and regular account. You wanna click on regular account for the time being because later on you can always upgrade to a SaaS account. And we're not gonna select any snapshots that are pre-built. We're just gonna click on blank snapshot. Now we're gonna go ahead and just select whatever business we're onboarding or whatever client you're onboarding. You can do it manually or you can search for it. They have Google Maps linked with this. It's pretty awesome. What I usually do is just add an account manually and then you go through all of this and then you gotta fill all this information and then click on save. And then here we are. This is the new sub account we just made. You can access it by going to your drop down menu here and selecting the new sub account you made. And it's a clean slate. Everything's brand new here. Now we gotta go ahead and create their own separate login so they can access their sub account from their own computer and their own login information so they can check up on certain information and check their own account. So what we gotta do is go down to settings and make sure you're in the sub account, the new sub account, go to settings. And then we have no team here. We gotta add a team member and they're gonna be the main team member. So we go to user info, add their name, everything like that. Go down to user permissions. Now, depending on which tier of your uh, monthly recurring fee you charge, whether whatever, whatever fee you charge, it could be the first tier, second tier, third tier, or if you only have two tiers, one or two, you can actually change the different permissions they get depending on what tier subscription model they're part of. So for the higher tier, obviously you wanna allow them to be able to do most of this stuff, if not all of it. And then for a cheaper tier, you would go ahead and restrict some of this stuff because you know they gotta pay up more to get access to some of this other stuff. Uh, and then user roles, we wanna go ahead and create them as the admin and call and voicemail settings, you know, they can actually add their own voicemail, which is pretty cool. And you guys can change some of this stuff around too. I personally always keep it as no timeout. And then user availability, I kind of just wanna select everything. I've never really experimented with doing anything other than that. Meeting location, whether they have Zoom or Google Meet, I mean, I don't think it really matters too much. Now we will go ahead and click save and create them a new profile. I'm not gonna fill out this information here, but essentially you're gonna see a new member right here. Now to add a phone number to their account, Obviously, we don't have a Twilio account linked. This is a new sub account. So we got to go to phone numbers. We don't have any phone numbers linked. I actually have a lead connector set up for all of my accounts, no matter what. It's the default now with Go High Level because they've transitioned into just having everything in house. We're going to go to add a number and then click on the area code we want. Now, I recommend picking an area code where the business is actually located in so it doesn't look like it's a spam call. So if you live in Miami, the Miami area code is 305. If you live in Philadelphia, the area code is 215. So for this, for this example, let's say they live in Miami because I love Miami. We go ahead and go click area code is 305. We go ahead and click search and we get all these different phone numbers to choose from. Whatever number you pick, this is the number that is going to be used uh, to send out text messages with as well as receive texts and even phone calls from. But go ahead and select a phone number here and then we go ahead and click save. I just picked this for this example. I'm gonna let it load. And now here we go. We have our phone number right there. We're gonna click on this pencil icon. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can't even see it actually. We're gonna, we're gonna click on this pencil icon right here and that's gonna bring us to a new tab, a new page. We gotta name the phone number and forward the calls to. Forwarding the calls to is going to be either your main phone number that you use, whether it's your personal or your actual main real business phone number because this phone number, the 305 number we made is just a mask that's kind of like covering our real number. Uh, it's pretty cool how you can do that. I pretty much leave this the same. Sometimes I click pass call number as caller ID. Uh, I leave this blank and incoming call, I usually go to 25 seconds or 30 seconds for both of these and then I go ahead and click update and then we're chilling with the phone number. And I almost forgot to mention this as well. After we set everything up for them, we would then go on to create a website for them. If they don't already have one or we wanna go ahead and build them out, a more aesthetic and professional website, you would also then send them here into the onboarding tab and give them this entire onboarding tutorial, which goes through like around 10 videos or so to help them understand the Go High Level software so they can do some things on their end and understand the platform easier. This is a game changer. If you guys wanna get access to it, you know where to go, links in the description. This is the main part of the onboarding process and it's not as automated as some other things in the software, but I like to be a little bit hands-on when I'm doing some of the onboarding stuff. But guys, check the video next to me right now if you wanna go ahead and continue learning about Go High Level which is the best SaaS company for white labeling software. I'll see you guys in the next video.